All right, uh, only a couple movies tonight, and the first one is something I want to know, dude. You guys anti-vouch this. I, I'm, I'm really curious. Entire Guilty Gear story in 14 minutes. I don't know anything about this game, and I've always been mad curious because it doesn't make any goddamn sense. And I saw Bedman, and I'm like, who the fuck is Bedman? So our story starts with a character called The Original, whose IQ was so immeasurably huge that he managed to discover the Backyard, which is a parallel dimension that governs everything that exists. He okay. decides to create a robot called The Universal Will, which is tasked with bringing true happiness to mankind, but it gets confused and becomes the main antagonist instead. Are you uh -huh. with me so far? So, robot gets bad, robot is evil. Y2K actually happens, and oh. every single electronic device in the world malfunctions in an event known as the Dawn of Revival. Uh -huh. Fortunately, there are five geniuses known as the Apostles who knew that Y2K was going to happen. Wait, what? what is this? Which game is this? This looks like an arcade game. A few years XR? later, a researcher, okay. who at this point is only known as That Man, kickstarts the Gear Project yeah. alongside his colleagues Frederick and Aria. Okay, that's Soul. I could tell by his hair. That's Soul, and I think his name was Fred, right? I don't know who that is. Oh, is that Jacko? Because they're married, right? Kind of, kind of. Not yet, not really. This research team entirely falls apart when that man uses the flame of corruption to turn Frederick into the prototype gear. Meanwhile, oh. in an effort to prevent well, the United States gear from militarizing gear technology, you didn't tell me what a that gear man is. decides to militarize gear technology. The result of this is Justice, a yeah. mobile suit Gundam built on the- That thing is a penis. I played the game that Justice is in, at least one of them. I played XX, and I never looked at Justice, but now I'm- Yeah, and it's a woman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks to the universal will, Justice becomes evil and gathers an army uh -huh. of gears to instigate a 100 evil. year long war against humanity called the Crusades. I don't know what a gear is. Is a gear a robot? Like an android? Can we call it an android? Kinda? No. Bioweapon. Okay. Some people are super robot and some are basically human. They just make it up as they go along. Is that a dinosaur? Are there dinosaur gears? I know there's that big shark guy with the dog in it. Yeah, this guy. It's a dog and a shark, but it's not even that guy. It's this guy in the back that's the, the driver. This thing is awful. I thought this game would be so cool. I bought this game from GameStop. I was like, damn, four-player fighting game? That sounds cool. And then you got to hit a button to turn around. Stupid. Oh, shit. That's not good. And his solution is to blow up the entire country of Japan. After okay. many years of battle, yes, I remember Haikis that. Army, they have the guts. Frederick, who now goes by the name Soul Bad Guy. I thought they were enemies. Seals justice inside a dimensional prison, which puts an end to the Crusades. Yeah. However, the prison only holds for about five years before weakening, which brings us to the very first Guilty Gear video game. You know, I've never seen the the. I've never seen the cover art. Videogames.com. Is that a real URL? Surely it redirects. Oh, it goes to Giant Bomb. Who is the content collective for Giant Bomb? Like, who's making these videos? Soul Bad Guy joins a tournament that is looking for the strongest fighters who can defeat Justice, but he discovers that the whole thing is a hoax orchestrated by a person of indistinguishable gender and named Testament. Testament. Testament revives okay. Justice using themselves. Indistinguishable gender? Really? Androgynous? I thought, like, I thought that was, like, a new thing. Damn, this looks ugly. This looks like a Game Boy Advance game. <laughs> it's so bad? Oh my god. <laughs> Headbutt. <Ugh. laughs> I went back to it. That's not my fault. He headbutts the robot. <laughs> Die, robot. Yeah, Soul kind of whoops Justice's mechanical ass. But uh -huh. remember, Justice was built on top of Soul's girlfriend, so now he just has to live with the fact that he took the life of his one true love. Right, yeah. Sucks for him, I guess. And uh -huh. this brings us to our next game, Guilty Gear X. Yo! Sex. What? Nothing what? happens in this one, but it does set the stage That's for Guilty Gear called? XX Accent Core Plus R, where Kai Kiesk becomes one of the three kings for a fictional nation known as Illyria, and also falls in love with Justice's daughter. Dude, I don't remember her looking like that. In XX, she looked a bit more tasteful, I think. Sprite? Oh, no, I should not scroll down. Oh my god. Guilty Gear 2, Overture, where Kai and Dizzy they have a son named Sin, but because Kai oh. would rather be a king than raise- Is that- he's Dizzy. that old? I didn't know- I thought Overture, Sin was a new character. Oh, doesn't he, like, eat a lot? What the fuck is that all about? He eats, like, a lot of meat or something? I watched some Kizzy streams, and he just- this dude is eating. He gives his son to Soul Bad Guy. Wow, what game is mission, this? Soul and Sin get attacked by an army of backyard creatures led by a woman named Valentine, who seeks to kidnap ah, Dizzy and use her okay. DNA to unlock the cube. Soon after, okay. Sin experiences firsthand what it's like to have daddy issues, which causes uh -huh. him to run away in anger, but this yeah. backfires because Valentine- Valentine kidnaps Sin and plans to use him to unlock the cube. Does she have a balloon? I hate Guilty Gear character design. Just make a hot woman, dress her in like three colors, and then she, d fuck it, she's holding a balloon. I don't know. It's like they add a new guy. All right, he's got a uh, long blonde silver hair and 50 belts, and he holds a recorder. 
like one of those little recorders that you played in elementary school. That's his character. He's the recorder guy. Guilty Gear character design is so bad, but I love it for that. Like, it's so stupid, but also cool. <laughs> Bedman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a guy that lays in a bed. That's the Bedman. Describe Faust? No. We don't have the time. I gotta play Mario Kart tonight. It's unabashedly corny. Yeah, and that's why I like it. I feel like, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe they take it really seriously. I feel like they just make shit up as they go along in Guilty Gear. Who cares? It's just to be cool. As opposed to a game that, like, takes itself super seriously. They're just like, yeah, and then they had a kid. <laughs> Afterwards, Soul begins assembling a new weapon known as the Junkyard Dog from the pieces of a much more powerful <laughs> weapon called the Outrage in the pachinko slot machine game called Guilty Gear Vastage XT. Right. Which takes place three months prior to the events of Guilty Gear x Sign. I in heard this that game, one was canon. a girl named Ramlethal declares yeah. war on the entire world, but then gets immediately captured by Soul. But then she reveals that she was only a decoy so that the leaders of the United Nations known as the Conclave can enact their true plan, which is to activate the cradle over the city of Babylon, causing an explosion and killing everybody. Okay, so she declared war on the whole world? Apparently, the Conclave is planning to fuse their souls with the corpse of justice and take over the world. The Conclave position themselves yeah. under a giant fucking lightning bolt and are ready to begin the revival process. But then Dizzy thwarts their operation with a magic... Thing. I think it's really cool <laughs> that there are no fat people in the Guilty Gear universe. There's literally Gold Lewis, right? I don't- is he fat or just bi- oh, he's- he's fat. Yeah. Man, this guy has high guts. <laughs> guts is a mechanic in the game. I found out about it a few months ago. Now, up to this point, I've neglected to mention this girl named Elfel. Yeah, she's she the... literally just showed up to Kai's doorstep one day and has been chilling with the soul she's bad the guy crew ever lady. since. Well, it turns out that she's actually evil, but not actually because she was really being possessed by the Universal Will, uh... who happens to be the Sanctus Maximus Populi, known as Ariels, who is also known as the leader of the entire world. Oh. Next game. I like this guy. This guy's funny. While all that shit's happening, a sexy magical witch lady named Eno awakens I love Batman's her. newest game. Her well, design is so goddamn sexy... cool. Her design is sick. I wish she wasn't hard to play. Apparently, she's impossible to play. She's such Jacko a cool Valentine. design. Apparently, Jacko holds one half of the soul of a woman named Arya Hale, aka yeah, yeah, Soul yeah, Bad yeah. Guy's former girlfriend. He learns from that man that this whole time, the Universal Will's master plan was to fuse Elf out with justice in order to create an actual perfect human being. That man also grants Soul an opportunity to revive his long dead girlfriend, Arya. Her soul currently resides in both Jacko and Justice. So if oh, you combine the two, I always wondered that because I thought that I thought that that was his girlfriend, but then I heard that Justice was that too. All right, you get a whole so last waifu. I feel but that. this process okay. is extremely risky and involves firing a giant laser directly at the both of them. <laughs> okay. So that's exactly what they do. Sure. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. The oh. laser is just not strong enough. So they fire the laser directly at Soul so that he can use his weapon, the Junkyard Dog, to amplify the output of the laser just enough to finally complete the fusion process. Cool. With Justice tight, destroyed tight, and tight. Aria revived, the crisis is averted. Awesome. And the Universal Will is taken into custody. Taken into custody? Like the police? That man, hiding away in the shadows for so long, finally takes off his hood and reveals himself to be a cat boy who goes by the name of Oscar R. Kreutz. Yeah, he's never been playable, right? Are they holding on to that one? He's the next DLC. Wait, is he really? Because he's been, like, important to the game for, like, decades, right? He's after Bedman. Ooh. It's time for Guilty Gear Strive, bitches. Already? Eno breaks into the prison cell of the Universal Will and takes directly from her boobies a man named Happy Chaos. Uh -huh. You see... At some point, in again, excellent character design. This guy looks cool. Happy Chaos stole half of Eno's powers, which is why she wants him to give her powers back so she could become a god. Happy Chaos just thinks this would be really funny, so he agrees to work with her. Meanwhile, Oscar turns himself into the United States government and is personally escorted by President Vernon to the White House, where he can go into hiding in the basement. He does mm -hmm. this right before the G4 Summit event, which sounds like the Chief title for a Smash tournament. Shoutouts. How do you guys feel about this anime trope? Like the flower in the eye or something in the eye like that? I think it's a neat idea, but I also hate it. I like it, but I, I hate that I like it. Does that make sense? I think it looks cool, but I hate myself for thinking it's nice. But I do think it's interesting. Eno then lets herself get caught by the police, which was part of their plan, but pretty much everybody finds it a little suspicious that this all-powerful character got arrested by a bunch of nobodies, so they're going to have Soul present at the White House for extra security. At Happy the Chaos White House? Mind controls all of the White House guards to be under his command, and now the White House is completely defenseless. Why didn't he do that the whole time? He has mind control? 
Luckily, Soul rushes in and punches Happy Chaos in the face, and then he books it out of there alongside the president. Happy Chaos then says fuck it, and decides to activate a previously classified government project known as Tir Nanog, spelled like this, which reveals that the White House is actually a giant floating airship, which is now en route to crossing the borders of Old Mexico, potentially leading to the White House getting shot down and starting a war. It suddenly dawns on Asuka that the amount of knowledge and magical power required to perform all this crazy shit can only lead to one truth. Happy Chaos is actually the creator of magic himself, the original. What? Yo! I didn't know that. That's crazy. I'm lost. Wow. Bro, you should have came in here earlier. Meanwhile, Biken is plotting her revenge against Happy Chaos for killing her friends and family all those years ago during the Crusades, which oh. attracts the interest of this small 12-year-old girl named Delilah, whose brother was also killed by Happy Chaos, asterisk. Delilah's brother, Bedman, was actually killed by a strange illness, which was fully activated by Venom and Robokai, who went after it because he was underling of the universal will. Wait, I thought Venom was the pool guy. Isn't Venom the pool guy? I thought he's the guy that plays pool. I thought he was a good guy. He's... A bad guy? I knew he was an assassin, but I thought he was one of those assassins with a heart of gold. Kinda. I fucking hate this. Every time I ask a question. He's part of the assassin guild. Yeah, but I, he's an anti-hero, aren't they all? Okay. So basically, universal will is the reason why Bedman died, but Happy Chaos was controlling the universal will from within her boobs. So by extension, Happy Chaos is technically the one who killed Bedman. Somehow this one guy got killed by four different people and a disease all at the same time. So Delilah leaves to take revenge by herself and attempts to teleport straight to Happy Chaos, but fails and inadvertently creates a super high-density info space bubble directly above a yeah. massive city that can explode at any moment. Biken oh. is in the middle of assessing the situation when she is met with Ram who's a good girl now and was actually appointed uh -huh. to be the head of the Illyrian Brigade. Are there any ugly women? I'm not being ironic here. This is a real question. Are there any ugly women in the franchise? Abba, if you think. Oh, yeah, the ABA, the key girl, right? I mean, she's the least feminine, like traditionally feminine, I guess. Still kind of hot, though. Biken and Ramlethal enter a magical door portal, which brings them on board an airship alongside May, April, Sin, and Faust. Oh, it's Faust! Using a very long rope, dragons, and a big door, the team manages to slice the info bubble in half, Yo! preventing the city from exploding and saving the lives of over 120,000 citizens. Biken and Delilah completely give up on revenge, and Faust does, um... Whatever that is. Yeah, what the fuck is his deal? Is he like Faust, like the guy from the book who makes a deal with the devil? Are there any parallels or do we not know anything about him? He's just a doctor. All right, hard to explain. Fine. I actually want to know the Street Fighter lore too. I don't know that either. I just know that Cammy is like a clone and was like Bison's, I don't, a doll or something. And Ryu wants to kill, or kill. Ryu wants to like find the strongest person and Ken likes training but would rather be a family person. So he, like, goes back and forth. Guile is part of the Air Force or something. Do not research Street Fighter lore. I've always been curious. And Bison is a bad guy, yeah, and, and Sagat is bad, and Vega is bad. Faust deals he was going to save a girl, but Big Medicine said no, so he went insane. Oh, so he's Mr. Freeze. The U.S. Pentagon decides oh that the God, only solution huge. to stop the White House from entering Mexico is to shoot it down. But they can't do that until Sol, Vernon, and Asuka are escorted off the aircraft. Wait, what's the Japanese equivalent of the White House? Like, it's weird that Japan is making a game about the White House flying away into the sky. The Diet Building? Is that real? Remember that Japan doesn't exist anymore. That's right, in this universe, they're gone. But the people who survived are very gutsy. Somebody told me that uh, apparently Japanese people in this game are strictly better people. Like, they're just stronger people because they had to deal with all that shit. They're like X-Men mutants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like Biken and I don't know the rest. Really? Yeah, I was shocked too. That blew my mind too. So there's something called guts in the game, which is like, if you would have died from a move, there's a chance that it negates a certain amount of damage. Less damage, the lower health you are. Yeah. Which is a, an annoying mechanic if you're just starting the game, by the way, because I should have killed that guy. They manage to make it to the escape pod, but upon opening the door, Happy Chaos teleports inside and locks himself in with Asuka. But then Asuka comes out with his Uno reverse card all like, fuck you, I was never actually in the escape pod, bitch. They eject Happy Chaos off the White House and redirect the airship to safety. Suddenly, the tone shifts as Asuka decides it's finally time to rid the world of Soul Bad Guy. Oh. He removes the flame of corruption from Soul, leaving behind but an ordinary man. Soul dies? Full Sara. Well, the curtains finally close on a story 23 years in the making. Oh, that's it. And a dawn of a new mankind. 
But okay. wait, because it turns out that the happy chaos that was ejected from the airship was fake and actually just some random guy that looked like happy chaos oh. while the real happy chaos was just sitting there. Oh. Chillin'. Happy chaos takes directly from right. Asuka's boobies the Tome of Origin, which allows Eno to finally transform into a god and do literally anything she wants. The first thing Eno does with her newfound godhood is reenact the end of Evangelion. But what? then she says that, with the flame of corruption no longer implanted in anyone, the only thing that can defeat her now is its counterpart, the scales of Juno. But uh -huh. who the hell is implanted with the scales of Juno? The scales of Juno were miraculously passed down genetically to yeah. none other than Kai Kisk. I'm not reading this shit. Gear STDs? Kai, with the necessary tools in hand, confidently stands up to Eno and prepares himself to protect the entire world in the ultimate battle of man versus he fails. After all hope seems lost, President Vernon comes strolling out with a bin of nuclear batteries capable of obliterating the entire world. Which were kind of just lying around in the Oval Office. <laughs> okay. okay then. So fucking machine guns those nuclear batteries all over Eno's right palm, yeah. completely eviscerating her from this planet and finally putting an end to the stupid ass overly complicated storyline. The cool. story ends with everyone doing their own thing. Soul starts building rocket ships in his backyard. Kai gives up on being a king. Happy mm. Chaos comes back somehow. And Asuka pursues his new goal and true intentions throughout the entire series, starting his own Spotify podcast. Uh, I'm not gonna retain any of that. This is how I feel listening to, to the Five Night stuff. It just literally is in one and not the other. Yeah, I don't know what's Anji's deal, what's uh, Johnny's deal. I know Chip's deal, because I made Chip in XX for some reason, and he, like, loves Japan, and he wants to be Japanese, right? Where was Potemkin? <laughs> when are they gonna talk about Potemkin? AI made Kony as a Guilty Gear character. Yo, that looks like Sora. That's pretty good, though. Look at a forearm, dude. Wait, I, I have my arms crossed, but my arm... Uh, what's going on there? Can I... Can you make one of me not looking like Soul? I don't like the Soul color palette. Surely I could be a more interesting character, right? You look French? <laughs> Why? Why do I have, like, a little beard here? Like, a little... It's not... It's like a goatee going up. I don't normally look like that. Pick an archetype? Make me a rushdown. Rushdown mix-up guy. Street Fighter lore, that seven minutes, that's it? You know what? Good. This is shorter than the other video I was gonna watch. Things begin with the original Street Fighter. It's Ryu really and Ken entering a fighting tournament in which Ryu enters the final fight against Sagat. Yeah. Being a young fighter at this and time, Sagat. Ryu gets completely yeah. destroyed by the much more experienced yep. Sagat. Then, in the honorable move, Sagat reaches down to help Ryu up. But it isn't the simple Ryu anymore. He has something dark deep down inside of him, and it awoke at this time. The dark nature took over, and he sucker punched Sagat with a Sharukin into the chest, causing his scar. That's the that's the gooky thing, right? That's the evil Ryu, the Akuma thing. And Akuma is the demon who like wants him to unleash the beast. Right? Next up is Street Fighter Alpha and Street Fighter Alpha 2. Oh, Alpha. this one there is no tournament. Okay. Everyone is out to take gooky. out Ryu. That's his name. Ryu, yeah. the current world champion. But one man is the most important. Akuma is searching the world for worthy opponents, gooky. and this brings that's him gooky. to odds with a few fighters. One such fighter is Gen. Though Gen is dying of leukemia, Akuma refuses Aww. to finish him off due to it not being a fair fight. Leukemia feels so real for a magic world. Yeah, they could have just made something up. I can't believe it's just actual leukemia. That's kind of like they could they could have made up something that's way less real, right? While this is happening, the Shadow Lao Criminal Syndicate is being formed with M. B Shadow Lao? Is this guy just wrong? I feel like he's saying everything wrong. While this is happening, uh -huh. Bison decides to use the world champion as his own personal host body. Oh, you see, no, Bison is looking to become the strongest by taking over the body of the strongest, and he kidnaps Ryu. Bison does brainwash him and pump him full of evil energies to see if he can awaken Ryu's true power. Oh, and then no. they can fight side by side. And that's the guy from Street Fighter V, the, the demon guy. What's his name? You know, the, the dude Ka Kage. Yeah, that's the one. What? Okay. Why is M. Bison, why did he hire a boxer? That's always been so weird to me. Like, Sagat makes sense. He's one of the strongest fighters, maybe a tactical uh, mastermind, whatever. Vega is a little weird, but maybe he, like, controls Europe or something. Why a punch guy? And he's stupid, right? He's, like, dumb. Next, we obviously move on to Street Fighter Alpha 3. Our villain, Bison, yeah. has moved to creating a doomsday weapon called the Psycho Drive. This is the one I And played. this makes up yeah. the storyline for a good chunk of our fighters that are out to get him. Primarily, Guile is now trying to rescue... What are these proportions? Oh, my God. Tiny-ass 
little head. Once Ryu oh. defeats him and puts Bison on his deathbed, Bison uses one last move to send his evil energies towards Ryu. Oh, no. Ryu begins to change into evil Ryu, but Ken, Sagat, and Sakura all convince him not to, and he defeats Bison in the end. Wait, Sagat's a good guy now? That's so cringe. Being one of the original games in which every fighter has their own ending, none of these appear to be truly canon, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to Ultra Street Fighter 4. Sure. Bison is back with okay, another clone body, but he isn't jump. the major villain this time. This time, it's those potential host bodies that he made that Charlie freed in one of his adventures in Bison's bases. Uh -huh. Seth is one of those bodies, and when he finally figured out who and what he was, he creates his own evil criminal organization called Sin, which hosts another tournament. Yeah, what's the deal with Seth, too? Is he God? Okay, here's the AI rushdown character. You got what you asked for. I didn't know why I look like that. He doesn't look like a rushdown character. Why do I have a headset? I don't like this. Make a better one. Keep trying. This was the boobless version? Wait, there's a... Is another version? Battle it out, and Bison proves that Seth is weak, which brings out one of Seth's followers, Jury. Bison. Uh, she's the foot lady. By the way, Capcom is gross for what they're doing with this character. Can I just say it? I don't even know this series, but this character, don't act up. Stop. Moving on, we have Street Fighter 3 Next Generation, Second Impact, and Third Strike. Bison doesn't seem to care about remaking his criminal organization after defeating Seth. Instead, what's Oro's deal? What's up with Oro? Weird old man? I just know you could see his, his, uh, you could see his package in one of his moves. He has a, he has like a down sweep. And you could just, it's right there, like for a couple frames. The Illuminati, and it's run by Gil after he defeated his brother for the right to control the organization. The main character, Alex, is out for revenge against Gil because his friend lost in a fair fight against Gil. In the end, after he defeats Gil, he goes on a world journey to discover himself. In the follow-ups, Alex's goal is to fight against Ryu because Ryu is still wandering the world trying to contain his inner evil. Uh-huh. Wait, so this is before five? This was seven years ago? Dude, video's old as hell. What? Also, where is Cammy from? What's Cammy's deal? Cammy's like a, a drone or something? He's like a clone? Okay, it's either that or the one hour long video. All right. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Oh, hell yeah. He's so fucking smug. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> this one is so smug. Look at your fingies. <laughs> Yo, is it always the fingers? I do look French, right? Don't I look vaguely European? Is it just because of Gluto? Do the pose? I can't. He has more arms than me. Pretty good, right? <laughs> Pretty good? That's as good as I could get it. That's all I could give you. You can't see my arms. No, yeah, sadly. Okay. That's as good as we're going to get. <laughs> 